So welcome to a, another edition of the Secure Dynamics Techcast with me. I have a prior guest, Helen Patton, who is the CISO at Ohio State University. Welcome, Helen. Thank you very much for having me again. Absolutely. So I know we, we missed a month. So we're going to catch up today. <laughs> um, and to be honest with you, I mean, every time I have to look up, hey, what are we going to talk about with, with you? It's, it's so easy because you, uh, I mean, seriously, because you post so much on LinkedIn, but it's not so much people post for the sake of posting, but you post with a reason to understand, right? And, and I'm going to pick up on one of the posts that you post and I'm going to read it out. It's really about um, what sorts of security blocks that you're asking the reader, what do they read and why? And uh, so for me, that was interesting. Like it made me pause and think, hey, what do I really, where do I really go for my source of truth? Um, but I was looking at the comments and there were certain things that just jumped out at me, right? So, and one was this consistent commentary about lack of bias. I'm going to a place where I know there is no obvious bias, credibility of the source. Right? Mm -hmm. So Brian Krebs kept showing up. It's like, okay, I'm Ed Armoso. And so, uh, so talk a little bit about what was the motivation behind the post? Were you surprised? Were you, uh, were the comments kind of endorsed a point of view that you had? And I'm going to broaden the scope very shortly. Yeah, sure. So actually what prompted it is something that I do in my spare time, which is um, I, I am a director of a cybersecurity institute here at Ohio State. And one of the things we did with the institute this year was take on the management of the cybersecurity canon, which had mm -hmm. been started by Rick Howard uh, when he was at Palo Alto. Yep. And Ohio State's taken that on this year. One of the things the committee has done recently is to um, explore if there are resources that security professionals could use that are not books. And so we had sent out a survey through social media, you would have seen that post as well, mm -hmm. that sort of said, if not books, what, where do people get their information? What might they find valuable? And the, the, the results are in, and it was podcasts and blogs. And so, of course, if you're going to do a canon, you've got to sort of have a criteria by which something would be considered canon worthy. Mm -hmm. And when you have a book, the content's pretty static. But when you mm -hmm. have a blog or a podcast, of course, it's not. And so I was curious to ask the community why they chose a certain blog, cast, a blog or podcast um, and what were the qualities they looked for in it? What kept them going back? What, you know, why did they value it? Which, which was why I posted it in the first place. And you're right, the, the results are always interesting when I throw questions like that on social media, that's for sure. So what, was, what are some of the big takeaways for you from the comments? Um, so first of all, I think LinkedIn or Twitter or pick your social media platform of choice is its own little bubble. So yeah. one, <laughs> I don't ask the question just in one place. I go to different bubbles and ask the different bubbles. Um, I found that the, the names of the blogs that people were throwing out, there were pretty common across all the bubbles, as it turned out, which tells me all security people are getting their information from pretty much the same set of sources, which is an interesting um, implication to the diversity of thought problem that we seem to have in the industry. Yeah. Um, and people had a real hard time, I think, identifying why they would pick a blog, uh, specifically a blog in this case. I didn't ask so much about podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, say, say, yeah, I, I agree with you. Some people said, look, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to go for the reliability and the trustworthiness of the source. But they didn't talk about how they measured that. They just said, I'm looking for something trustworthy. Well, is that because lots of people read that blog? Is it because it's been around for a long time? Uh, is it because I've fact-checked some of the writings and I've found them to be accurate? Like, I don't think people read at that level of depth right. um, typically. So it was an interesting first stab at trying to answer this question of, of what do we find valuable and is that a measurable thing that if you're going to make an award, you could, you could do that. Um, but I don't think I've got to the bottom of the answers yet. <laughs> So, so just uh, tagging on, kind of broadening the scope beyond just uh, um, security sources of, of truth or information is there is certainly, uh, like you mentioned, I mean, that people have, uh, and I've seen this myself and I, I'm guilty of it too, right? So if you ask me specifically, like, why do you follow so-and-so person? It's like, 
I love what he writes or what she talks about and all that. So it's, it's very vague. So yeah. if you are an up and comer, whether be it a journalist, be it a security investigator, be it a vendor for that matter, right? Uh, he, there is no blueprint. Hey, here are the three things you need to do. And people talk about consistency, talk about reliability, talks about number of I mean, likes and shares, even though that's, that's yep. highly debatable, right? Yep. So uh, again, given your cybersecurity canon, the fact that you're dealing with uh, a pretty large university with, with uh, all kinds of generational um, dialogue over there, plus your own CISO community, right? Is, again, I'm putting you on the spot over here, right? Which is, what have you seen to be, uh, if I would ask you for a blueprint, right? I mean, how does Ashwin become a trustworthy source of X? Yep. Um, what are the things that, that somebody has to do to be able to get there? And again, in this, in this like you're saying, in, the, in these bubbles, it's easy to get caught up with, hey, you're an Insta celebrity or you're, you're LinkedIn following with 2.1 million followers. And right. in fact, somebody has that today and she has that in her title. It's like, okay, what does that really mean, right? It's, uh, yep. what, 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 what advice do you have? Um, <laughs> if you don't know where to start, I think asking other people in the industry or around you um, what they're what they're listening to can be a great place to start. So whether you're a student or trying to hack into cybersecurity or you've been in here 20 years, I think there there are people that you're networking with and you're mentoring with and you should reach out to them and ask. And that's a that is a great place to start. Mm-hmm. When I'm walking my dog, I listen to a lot of podcasts and um, and I find that I can tell pretty much right away if I am listening to something that challenges me, which makes me think like if, if I'm still thinking about the topic after I've finished listening mm-hmm. to a podcast or after I finished reading a blog, that to me is valuable. I may not agree with what's yeah. being said, but I, it at least gets my creative juices sort of working to, yeah. to go, you know, how does this apply to me? How does it apply to my environment? Is this something I can use? Um, I think over time, it takes time. You, I don't think you can judge a blog or a podcast by one thing, like by one event, by one post. Um, I think you you need to listen to something over time mm-hmm. and you will find over time, yes, this is in my sweet spot and I'm getting something out of it. Or this is way ahead of me. I'm, I'm not where they are yet. I've got growing to do. I need to find something that's a little close to where I'm at or the, or the reverse, right? I'm way past this. I was thinking about this five years ago. I don't need to be listening to it again, it, but it, it, it's, it's very personal. Um, having said that though, I think if you're reading someone who blogs particularly, um, I, I am looking for a broad array of sources. So I'm not looking for someone who blogs and they just tell me what they think. I'd lo- I like there to be research behind mm-hmm. the things. And I, as a blogger, by the way, I suck at this. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I want to be able to check the sources. If they're going to throw out a fact or a figure, I want to know where it came from, those kinds of things. So I, I do want things to be verifiable to the extent they can be. I think that's harder to do on a podcast. Um, but not impossible. So I do look for some verifiability in that, in that space too. No, that's great. I, I to, to summarize again, as you were speaking, I was just trying to kind of make, make mental notes to myself, right? One is the long tail that you talk about, right? Which is at the end of a blog, end of a podcast, have you made Helen think about this way after the podcast ended, right? Right. And I think the, the second aspect of it is until you become a reliable source where people gravitate to you naturally because of who you are, I think, yeah, you have to build the credibility. And like you said, a lot of it comes to, hey, coding sources, people know you've done your homework too. Plus you're giving them in the event, they need to fact check what Ashwin wrote. Here is a link and go and see. So next time around, maybe they give me a, a buy, right? Yeah. Because he's done his job. So I think, yeah, that, that that's great uh, insight. So always great chatting with you, Alan. Again, uh, stay safe and looking forward to our next one. Yeah, terrific. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.